Hey, Welcome bro. to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trip Foreman. Today we got Jason Forrest with us and we're going to be talking about the new Lost Little Wing. Jason, uh, this is your own board. Uh, what are the dimensions on this board? Sure is. This is the board I've been riding for a couple weeks. A variety of conditions. It is 5'9", 19.3, 2.4, 28 liters. You know, I'm 5'8", 155, 160 pounds and it is right in the, the zone of like my standard shortboard. Okay. Dimensions. Yeah. All right, awesome. So, uh, you know, through loss, like through the loss release of this board, and then also the the stuff that uh, Matt's been putting out there. Uh, this is a Mason Ho mm -hmm. inspired model or Mason Ho Pro model. Uh, there's supposed to be some baby buggy Correct. in this board, like buried deep yeah, I don't know what it's like in, in the board. Yeah. You know, I don't know if it's in the back like or the here, front or maybe yeah. in the middle mm -hmm. down the stringer. But yep. uh, that one, you know, the baby buggy thing kind of caught my eye on it because mm -hmm. uh, I've been a huge baby buggy fan and I love the baby buggy boards that I did yep. have. Uh, tell us about the performance on this thing. Yeah, I never rode the baby buggy. Um, what really caught my eye on it was just the the dimensions, the size, and the uh, the concave. I really like a smaller board with a lot of rocker and good and good amount of concave. So it, okay. it hit all those marks for me. Uh, performance wise, I really really like this board in you know shoulder head high waves, waist high waves, and like this size range. Yeah, it was just exceptional. It surfed really really well. Um, it impressed me with its. You know, high performance surfing as high performance as I can surf, and then uh, you know the one day where it was tubing a little bit, we were surfing with Brett, and it tube rode like really well, it rode more like a step up. A couple a couple waves I got, I was really psyched this board. It's been a good add to the quiver. So I remember when we got like the release materials on this mm -hmm. thing, and this was like the number. This was the first board on 100%. your on your order yep. card, and I remember you referencing like like the nose being a little bit narrower and the like being some hip in the back yeah. of the board like r run us through like kind of what you saw in the outline and maybe like kind of hold the board and kind of like show yeah show i, going on I instantly when when you passed me the catalog and was like yo pick out you know the board you want i instantly went to this one because it's the perfect board for around here for so many waves that we get and right that, you know waist and shoulder high and the reason why is it's a traditional shortboard you know outline um for performance wise but it had a lot of concave, which I really like. The, the right width, narrow nose, and then a little bit of a pulled in hip on the tail. It's not as pronounced when I got the board, but you can tell when you ride it that it has that pulled in tail. Okay. Um, it, it pretty much did exactly what I thought I was gonna do. And then obviously with the Mason Ho influence, you couldn't help but be excited to, to ride something that he had an involvement with. Did you ollie over like any rocks or no, anything in the lineup didn't. or jump off any cliffs any, or nothing. anything like that? No, any nothing. weird, any nothing. weird stuff? No, no, not very weird. <laughs> the uh so let's talk about like extra rocker and uh concave so we we have a very rockered out wave yes here. We, we do we don't yeah. have a slopey wave here how did the extra rocker like did you find like that helped with the board like fit into the curve of the yeah. wave or yeah i mean our board our waves here are very steep no matter whether they're knee high or shoulder high you know right. so having that extra bit of rocker really helped to fit the variety of waves that i've had it in and then the massive amount of concave it really has it that get up and go drive that you're looking for in a in a shortboard. So it's got a ton of concave and resulted in a lot of you know speed right out of the gate. All right, let's talk about uh, tail pads yeah. on, on this board, Jason. So it looks like you've got a creature's tail pad, three piece, uh, flat. There's no arch in this. Correct. in this pad so what's your uh what's your game there what are you thinking yeah so that was recommended by by us and mason because mason does not use pads he's a, okay he hates them so the board actually comes with like a broken in feel that actually has concave in the in the deck. deck yeah so if you use the pad with an arch it would be too tall it would be giant it would the be top, giant right? so you got to go with the flat pad we have those in stock and uh yeah, the board felt broken in from day one, you know, it felt like it's ready to go. Okay, cool. And so, yeah, what Jason's talking about is uh, when Mason rides his boards, um, you know, you can either shape those dents in there or you can just hammer them in through right. surfing and just right. turning really and pushing really hard. Yeah. But there's uh, there's basically, you know, you've seen a concave or a double concave on the bottom. And so there's basically a double concave on the deck mm -hmm. on, the, on the pad. So it just goes down where your heel would be and down where your, and your toes would be and goes like that and so it already has that and if you were to put a pad on top of it it would be right you know or an arch on top would be way too high yeah so recommended flat pads on this board let's talk about um i mean you're a good surfer like you're a proficient surfer like what where is the bottom end range of this thing like where it it still works good you know like where you're still psyched that you're on it yeah i mean i have other boards so like i had you know twin fins and grovelers that i will gravitate towards when it's you know stomach high waist high and below you know 
if I was a contest guy, like I'd probably ride it in knee high waves, but like, you know, I'm gonna gravitate more towards a groveler. So I would uh -huh. say it has a pretty specific range of like waist high to, you know, maybe a little bit overhead. Okay. Um, I, I don't think it's at the bottom end. And then I had one day where it was really good and kind of overhead. And, I kind of thought I felt the upper limit of what the board is. You felt the red line? Yeah, I felt the red line. And but so what's just maybe what, because I'm not Mason Hill. What's the red line on this thing? Um, we had one day when I think Jeffrey was out of town, so I don't think we got any clips from that day, but it was like really clean and overhead. And I had some great waves on it, but I had a couple bottom turns where I was like, could feel like kind of the red line on it. Okay. But I had some great turns and tubes and some, it was a good day for sure. Um, and and but, that's that's here, right? So yeah, that's, that was here. that's overhead by thick. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. not soft, not soft yeah. overhead. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But the, the days I had it on where it was shoulder high, it was like, oh, this thing's epic. It was good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, awesome. performance showport, you know. And so what about accessibility to like pro to pro world? Like, so it, is this a, is it a hard board or like a, I don't know, is it like a hard short board to ride, like finicky short board to ride? Like could a I, could a good intermediate ride it and like it? I think it's an advanced board for sure. You know, okay. I you know instantly when you get on it, it feels like it's got a pretty pulled in nose. It's pretty advanced short board. Um, I think you'd want to be an intermediate to advanced surfer, but it could also be something to progress into. You know, if you've been riding bigger, fuller boards because right. it is wider and has that concave that'll give you that. Let's give you the zip. Yeah, that zip. So that's awesome. a good range. Awesome keeping it in your quiver yeah yeah you're keeping Keep, it in your quiver. yeah yeah that's always a question I, yeah. I'm, <laughs> that's gonna, I like that, I'm gonna keep this one but it's the true litmus yeah, test <laughs> i'm gonna keep it i love the biola's fins like that that's a perfect pair uh -huh. definitely keeping it but i'm i'm now looking to fill that hole that's right in here above it yeah right here so i need that 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 board next one right up. above it the next one up yeah i was kind of hoping it'd go a little higher in the in the range but I'm definitely going to keep it for, you know, the, the waist high, yeah. and shoulder high days. Yeah, especially with August and September. Exactly. Right you know, around, it's right around the yeah, corner. Right so around I'm the like, corner. Right, you got to make sure you got the one up. Is it the step driver? You know, maybe, yeah. maybe. I don't yeah. know. We'll see. Awesome, man. Cool. Well, Jason, thank you so much for joining us. Again, this is the Lost Mason Ho Little Wing. If any of you out there have any additional questions on this board or would like to place an order, either for one in stock or write up a custom order, you can always reach us at the shop. 252-987-6000 or look us up online realwatersports.com forward slash surfing thanks for tuning in